you very, very much. It's wonderful to see you again. It's wonderful to be here. I have to start on a personal note. Nine days ago, my eighth grandson, my eighth grandchild was born in this city. And that means that yesterday he was inaugurated into the covenant of the people of Israel. And his name, which we don't announce until after his uh, ritual circumcision, his name is Micah, who said, do justice, love mercy, and walk humbly with thy God. So it's very special to be here. You heard that I run American Jewish World Service. I want to thank, on an ongoing basis, Jacob Feinsman from our staff, who has been working with Jubilee nonstop since uh, he started with AJWS several years ago. You just heard the simple part of why we're here. The people who desperately need us, those are the people that American Jewish World Service is privileged to work with around the world. The people who are desperate for those schools without fees, those health clinics that they can actually use, those additional teachers, those inoculations that will allow them to proceed through their lives. And we know that every child educated one more year, every dollar spent on health care, radically changes the prospects for the communities in which we work and for the countries of which they are a part. Our legislative goal, as the bishop enunciated, is simple. It is, of course, to thank the members of Congress who are here, to thank the sponsors of this legislation, to thank the people who will we hope be strengthened by our work in these next couple of days and their ongoing effort to um, mark up and move these bills swiftly through both houses of Congress to provide that additional uh, cancellation of debt in 67 of the poorest countries with no damaging economic conditions. And we know this goal works because we have this now almost 10 year track record of dollars invested in basic infrastructure and in health and education. So the legislative goal is simple, but it is the spiritual and moral goals, the faith-based dimension of this work, that we are here, in a sense, to celebrate and to advance. I fasted last Thursday for debt, but I fasted a few weeks ago for Yom Kippur. And when I fasted on Yom Kippur, I was reminded that I fast not only for the sins of commission that I've done during the previous year, but for the sins of omission, for the things that I failed to do, for the times and ways in which I failed to stand up for the people who need us the most. And on Yom Kippur, we read from the book of Isaiah, this is not the fast that I want if you do nothing except deny yourself food. I want the fasting that helps loose the chains of injustice, that allows us to break the cords of the yoke, to set the oppressed free. So that's why we fast every year. And this year, we fasted on Yom Kippur, 10 days after the Rosh Hashanah, the beginning of a new Jewish calendar year, and it is now as well our Sabbath year. And in that Sabbath year, in that seventh year, we, forgi we, we, uh, we uh, forgive debts. We take care of the earth by allowing it its Sabbath and its time to rest. And in doing that, we change the face of the world. Jacob, who I referenced before, wrote an article that I think probably many of you have seen that talks about this Sabbath year and points it out that it is a vision of a life in community that is liberating for all because it allows the earth to rest and people to set their slaves free and people to, to cancel debt because it allows us to renew not only ourselves but our community. Jacob has described this seven year cycle as being the Marshall Plan of its time. What better analogy for us today as we are here urging Congress to extend debt cancellation so that more yokes can be broken, so that more people can live free, so that more communities can rebuild.